Hey everyone, welcome back to New York City. Lisa Martin and John Furrier with theCUBE here live covering the AWS Summit NYC 2022. This is about, um, there's about 15 different summits going on this year, John, globally. We're here with about 10,000 attendees, just finished the keynote, and two guests from Software One. Please welcome David Torres, the Director of Cloud Services, and Asim Khan, a North American AWS Services Delivery Lead at Software One. Welcome guys. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. us. Talk to us, David, kick us off, give the audience an overview of Software One, what do you sure. guys do, and then tell us a little bit about the AWS partnership. Sure, no, uh, so Software One, we are uh, one of Microsoft and VMware's largest resellers. Um, we help customers with our IT asset management services, managing their on-premises licensed real estate. Um, but we're, we're definitely a company that's undergoing a transformation. And, and when I say that, essentially we're focused on three key pillars with our go-to-market. Um, supporting the hyperscalers, so we do support AWS, Azure, GCP. Um, app modernization, because we do see this with a lot of our customers. You know, they're moving from on-premises to AWS, they have a, a lot of technical debt and they're looking at options to modernize that. And uh, mission critical workloads like SAP, Windows, Oracle. Um, and we offer you know, a suite of professional services, managed services, migrations, um, it, Quite a, quite a bit of services. <laughs> Asim, can you kind of double click on the services that Software One delivers to customers, maybe some key use cases? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think in the, uh, in the Amazon space, I would say we're currently focusing a lot in, 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 in the area a lot of funding programs that Amazon currently has. For example, the Migration Acceleration Program, which is a map. Uh, we're supporting customers basically with, with, with the entire cloud journey that they might have or, or helping them define that cloud journey. Uh, and then we can help the customer in, in any phase of that journey as well to basically take them a step, step above. Uh, so that's what our area of focus is right now to basically help enable customers. So on the Microsoft AWS, you mentioned Microsoft, I mean they've had the enterprise business for years and you know developers was their you know, ecosystem. Back right. in the day, right. developers, developers, developers as Steve Ballmer once said, uh, and that was their crown jewel. But then you know, .NET now has Linux, they got a right. lot more open source, so those enterprises, their customers are changing. A lot of them are on AWS. Right. So talk about that dynamic of the shift to AWS, and now that Azure's out there, what's the relationship of those hyperscale? How do you guys navigate those sure. waters? I, I mean, it, it's always um, the concept of work backwards from the customer, right? What are the business outcomes they're trying to drive? And, and def, you know, define a strategy from that. Um, and it, it's still a function of change management for a lot of customers, people, process, and tools. Um, so, you know, in a, in a lot of cases with our customers are evaluating what's the skill set of our people, do we need to upskill them, um, the tools that we're using, how do we use those on, on the multiple clouds, right? And then the processes. So, um, for us, you know, we have some customers that um, prefer one cloud over an, another. Uh, we, have, we have customers that run across multiple clouds, they, they deploy different workloads. And then we have some customers that transformation and modernization are really big, top of stack for them. Um, so in, in, in some cases, those customers are, are going to AWS and you know, we're, we're helping them kind of with that journey. It's interesting, you know. the developers, Amazon literally won right. the developer cloud market right. early on, going back right. 15 years. Absolutely. Um, but not all developers. Enterprise developers who have, you know, in the enterprises, they have, they're stuck in their ways, but are changing. Right. This is a digital transformation moment because cloud native applications, the modernization piece, is developer centric. Absolutely. It's key, the developers. So I'm interested in your perspective and reaction to what's going on in that developer market right now with DevOps exploding in a great way, the goodness of the cloud coming I, more and more to the table. Sure, no, ab absolutely, great question. So, so I think with enterprise developers, you know, we, it, we see just the business is driving a lot, of, a lot of the outcomes, right? So the modernization aspect of needing to get to market faster, needing to deploy applications faster, having a more efficient uh, operating model, more automation, and uh, for your point on the .NET modernization, you know, we work with customers too as well. Uh, we actually have a, we made an acquisition a couple years ago, a company in a Grupo, they actually specialize in this, in .NET modernization. So, um, we, you know, we're seeing some customers that are, are moving to Linux, right? And they want to go .NET Core, um, and they want, you know, they're, they're kind of standardizing on, on Linux. So, uh, we kind of see a you know, wide spectrum, but yeah, maybe. Where are your customer conversations as things have changed so much and accelerated dramatically in the last couple of years? Sure. Obviously we've talked about the developers, but talk to me about you know, business imperatives for businesses in every industry to digitally transform to be, no, number one, to survive the last couple of years, but two, to be, to be at a competitive advantage. Sure, no, um, so 
So I think with the uh, with with businesses, um, you know, obviously, 2017 innovation, 2022, it's a little bit different, right? There's obviously macro conditions. You have COVID, so you know we're seeing where uh, customers are essentially really doing their due diligence, right? When they make their choices uh, more than ever before, and they're trying to maximize, right, their spend and their ROI when they when they move to cloud. And, and that involves, you know, with the licensing advisory, what they can move, what they can modernize, um, the migrations, and just the, just the roadmap and what strategy. But what I see is just, it's, it's the business outcomes, and what they're trying to drive, and, you know, we're seeing some trends too with maybe your more um, conservative uh, segments like healthcare, public sector, right, utilities, uh, that they are really investing in, in moving towards the cloud. Yeah. I see, I got a question from yep. Twitter, a DM I want to sure. ask you. You guys are on the front line, so you yeah. see the customers, which is really great, because it's primary data. You guys are right there, right. and you're, you're not biased. You, you work with whatever hyperscaler, so it's really good. So the question that came up was, can you ask them the following? Um, what's going on on the data warehouse front, cloud warehouse front? You got Redshift competing with Synapse, Azure Synapse, Google BigQuery, and then you got Snowflake and Databricks out there. So you got this new data provider but it's not a data warehouse, and you got Teradata refactoring on AWS, for instance, right. as well. So, right. you know, this whole new level of data analytics with how you're doing cloud data. Right, not, right. And it, you call it a data warehouse, I guess, for categorically, but it's really not a warehouse. Right. It's a data <laughs> lake or some sort of, and you got lakefront foundation. What, you, what's you, what are you guys seeing on the front lines with customers as they try to squint through how to deal with the data and which cloud to work with? Uh, that, that is a good question. Uh, I mean, I've, uh, I've been in the industry a long time. I've worked for some major uh, uh, financial institutions uh, as well. And uh, data or big data was big for <laughs> that industry. So I've seen how the trends have changed, but from our perspective, because we are a, an agnostic services company, as you mentioned, we basically can work with any hyperscaler, we initially see what the business needs are for the customer. Uh, if the customer is already, for example, using Amazon, we initially want to have the customer use native tooling available within that, that, that hyperscaler space. Uh, if the customer is open uh, for us to give them any recommendations, of course, we look at the business needs, we look at what type of data is going to be stored, what the industry is, Based on all of those inputs is, is, is when we basically give the right recommendation. It could be a, a third party uh, uh, data warehousing solution. Uh, it could be a native one. It all depends on what the business needs of the customer are. So for example, and most companies do this, they build on say AWS, which is one of the first big clouds, and then they go, hey, we got customers over there at Azure. That's Microsoft. They got a, thousands and thousands of customers. Snowflake's done and everyone else is kind of yep. doing there. And they have marketplaces as well. So, you guys are kind of agnostic, it sounds like, whatever the architecture is on the stack Correct. that they choose. Correct. So th that's, that's what makes us special. Uh, I think we are one of those services companies which is quite unique in the industry, and I, I don't say that just because I work for Software One. <laughs> that, that is a fact. Uh, that gives us a very unique perspective um, of, of giving the customer the right piece of advice, uh, because we've seen it all and we've done it all. Uh, so that's, I think, what, what, what puts us unique. And regarding technology, all the different hyperscalers, they, they might have a very similar uh, back-end technology stack, but uh, what the front-end services each uh, uh, hyperscaler is building are very unique. Uh, Amazon being the leader in this space, they've been uh, ahead of the curve by a few years, they will always have certain solutions which are uh, above the rest. So, I mean, I myself, have, uh, I mean, I've always been an Amazon person, so <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly biased, <laughs> but hey, I mean, I, the good I'm news not is choice. About that. The good news is the customer has choice. Yeah. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Yes, do. Right. And yes, we do, do see customers that want to be agnostic, right, yeah. with, their, with their technology choices. And, and I, should, I should, actually, it's a good segue about our partnership with AWS. Um, we recently signed a strategic collaboration agreement uh, between both parties, uh, so is there, there's going to continue to be big investment from us, scaling out our professional services, our practice areas, right. and then also key focus area for us, FinOps, because we do see uh, customers that are already Is that your heavily, number one area? Um, it's it's one of the areas, okay. yeah. What are your uh, top three area, practice areas? I would say top three, uh, mission critical workloads, so enter, enterprise workloads like SAP, Microsoft, Oracle, uh, two, app modernization, um, and, and three, definitely uh, FinOps and, and the hyperscalers, right? Because we see a lot of customers that have already heavily adopted cloud, um, they're struggling with that 
cloud financial management aspect. What are, so if they're struggling, what are some of the key business outcomes that they come to you to software right. one and say, help us figure this out, we have to achieve A, B, C? Sure, so depending on the maturity of the customer and where they are in the journey, uh, if they've already, if they're already very heavily adopting cloud, you know, AWS or Azure, uh, we see in a lot of cases that the customers are, are unsure if uh, they're getting the most out of their cloud spend, um, and they're looking at their, their operations and their governance, and you know, they're coming to us and basically asking us, hey, we feel like our cloud spend is a little bit out of control. Um, can you help us? And that's where we can come in, you know, provide the, the advice, the guidance, the advisory, but also give them the tooling, right, to uh, have visibility into their, into their cloud spend and make those recommendations. And we also offer a managed uh, FinOps service that actually does, will we'll end to end do this for the customers to help them manage their, their resell, their invoicing, their marketplace res, uh, buy, as well as their uh, cloud spend. So the, obviously the, the engagement varies customer to customer. What's a typical right. time frame? Like how long does it take you to really get in there with a the customer, understand what the direction they need to go and create the right plan? Sure, it, 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 it again comes back to the cloud journey. You know, if the customer is still some, you know, very much on-prem and maybe more you know, conservative, um, it, it may start with licensing assessments, uh, just to, just to write, give them an idea of what it would cost to move those workloads, right? Uh, then it turns into migration, modernization. So that, you know, it can be anywhere from one to six months, you know, of just consulting, right, to get the customer ready. Um, and then we help them with the, you know, obviously with their migration plan. But if they're already heavily, heavily adopting cloud, um, it, you know, we do remediation work, uh, we do optimization. So we, I mean, it really just depends on, on what they're, what they're obviously SAP, that's a longer cycle, right. so. <laughs> so I got to ask you guys, what sure. is the Pyra Cloud? Software One has a platform, Pyra Cloud. What is that? Here, uh, why don't I answer sure. that? Um, uh, <laughs> it's it's pronounced Pyracloud. Uh, it's basically our proprietary. How do you pronounce it? A Pyracloud. Pyracloud. Okay. I like Pyracloud better. With, Pyra with the Y in there. <laughs> uh, it's basically Pyra our Cloud. spend okay. insight platform. Uh, it gives uh, customers an, a, a truly agnostic, single pane of glass view into their entire cloud enterprise spend. What I mean by that is, uh, with a single login, the customer has access to uh, uh, looking at their uh, enterprise spend on AWS, on Azure, as well as GCP. And in the future, of course, we're going to add other hyperscalers in there as well. Uh, because of the single pane of glass view, the customer has a true, or the customer leadership, or for example, the CTO, has a single pane of glass view into the entire spend. Uh, we allow the customer to basically have an enterprise level tagging strategy, which is across all the hyperscalers, as well as then allowing a certain amount of automated uh, cost management as well, which is again um, uh, agnostic and, and enterprise wide. Can you share an example of a customer for whom you've helped them, given them this single pane of glass through Pure Cloud, and by how much they've been able to reduce costs or optimize costs? Yes. Um, Mostly the customers who would be a very good fit for a Paracloud would be a slightly more mature customer who already has a large amount of spend or who's already very mature in their different hyperscalers. And usually what we've seen, uh, once um, a customer is mature in the cloud, over a certain period of time, uh, controlling costs does become difficult. Uh, even though you might have automation in place, but to get to that automation, you have to go through a certain amount of time of uh, basically things breaking and you fixing them. So this is where Paracloud uh, becomes very helpful to help control that and building a strategy which once in place is, is repetitive and helps you maintain man, manage costs and spend in the cloud uh, year after year then. One of the things I want to get your guys' reaction before we wrap up is this show here has got 10,000 people, which is a big number. Post-COVID, right. events are coming back. But in the past five years we've seen, or six years or seven years since like 2015, a lot's changed. What's changed the most? Share to the audience what you think is the biggest step function change that's happening right now. Is it that data's now prime time, everyone's got a lot of data, has figured out the consequences with it? Is it scale, is it super cloud? Is it the, is it the ecosystem? Because this is not stopping, the growth in the enterprise right. on the digital transformation is expanding. Even though GDP's down and we're, that gas prices are high and inflation, this isn't stopping. Now right. some of the unicorns might be impacted by the headwinds, Right. The, the big overfunded valuations, but not the ecosystem. What's right. changed? What's the big change? Well, I, I, I think what I see is this cloud is becoming the de facto operating model, and customers are working backwards from that as their primary goal, right? To operate in the cloud. Um, and they're, 
as I mentioned before, they're just, they really are doing due diligence, right, to really understand the best approach uh, for seeing kind of maybe some of the challenges other customers have had when they first moved to, to AWS. Um, so, and, and I'm you know, seeing industries that maybe five years ago, you know, we're not about moving to cloud, like healthcare. I can tell you a lot of our healthcare customers, they're, they're trying to get to cloud as fast as possible. It's a wake up call. It's a wake up call, right. absolutely, absolutely. So, I see, what's your reaction? In, in, in my point of view, uh, with what's happened these last few years, um, with uh, a lot of companies uh, having their employees work from home and being remotely, I think end user compute was one of the big booms which right. happened about two years ago. Uh, we support a lot of customers in that space as well. And then overall, I think uh, uh, we actually saw that uh, there was much more business focus with uh, employees working from home for some reason. And we saw that internally in our own organization as well. And with that focus, um, the whole area of being more lean and agile in the cloud space, I think became much more prevalent for, for all the enterprises. Everybody wanted to be uh, uh, spend conscious, uh, being uh, availing the different tools available in the cloud arena, like auto scaling, uh, like uh, using, for example, uh, containerization, using uh, uh, um, uh, such, such solutions to basically be more resilient and more more lean to basically control costs. So necessity is the mother of all inventions. It, it they is. got forced. So you got yeah. a wake up call and then a forcing function. Right. To like, okay, but it exposes the consequences of a modern application, modern environment, because they didn't, they're out of business. So then Absolutely. it's like, okay, this is actually working. <laughs> right, Why don't we right. like kill that project that we've doubled down on, move it over here. So I see that same pattern. What right. do you guys see? Yeah, no, I mean, I see that, we see that pattern as well. Just modernization, efficiency, uh, you can just move faster, more elasticity, you know, and, and I, again, the wake up call, you know, for organizations that um, people couldn't couldn't go to data centers, right? Um, yeah. That's <laughs> hey, we actually have a customer that, that that was literally the reason they they made the, the move, right, to, to AWS. Yeah, yeah and I would I would add one more thing to to that particular point. Um, with with the time available, um, I think uh, cu customers were able to actually now re-architect their applications slightly better to be able to avail, for example, uh, 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 no server type of uh, solutions or, or, or using uh, uh, certain design principles which were much more uh, uh, cost uh, uh, lean in, in the cloud. And that's what we saw. I think customers spent that time available over the past couple of years to be much more cloud-centric, I would say. Yeah, the forced march was really an accelerant and a catalyst in a lot of ways. Correct. For good, and there's definitely right. some server linings there. As we're out of time, but thank you so much for joining oh, John awesome. and me talking about Software One, what you guys are doing, helping customers, what you're doing with AWS and the hyperscalers. We appreciate your time and your insights. Thank awesome. you for thank having us. Thank, thank you for having us, really appreciate All right. it. For our guests and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from New York City at AWS Summit NYC. Stick around, John and I will be right back with our next guest.